Welcome to Tech Brothers. This is our first video of setting up SQL Server high availability in Microsoft Azure tutorial. So in this video, we are going to take Azure portal introduction. We will know how to uh, get to the Azure portal URL, how to set up a free account. Microsoft does give you $200 worth of uh, credit uh, if you set up free account and you can use various services in um, MS Azure portal. And then we will, once we are in the portal, uh, after setting up our account and subscription, uh, then we will go into the portal and we will see different components uh, on the portal and we will take a brief look on that. So after that, we will come back to the tutorial agenda, uh, what we are going to cover in this tutorial going forward. Obviously, it's going to be um, covered in different videos, but um, Let's have a brief introduction that what exactly our motto is here uh, in this tutorial. So let's go and complete our first thing, portal URL. All I did was basically in Google search, I typed MS Azure portal login, and this is the first URL right here that you need to click, and this is how it looks like. So if you don't have login, uh, you can't sign in, but you can click on free account and create your free account. This free account does require your credit card. However, you will not be charged uh, from your free subscription until you change your subscription to pay as you go or Visual Studio subscription or whatever the subscription you're gonna choose that requires more money. But uh, if you use just free account, it is available for 30 days, $200, and you can use various um, uh, services on, on, on the portal. So click on this and it'll ask you, um, some of your information, put that there, and it'll create an account for you. So for me, um, I have already created the account right here. I am logged in, as you can see, and this is how the portal look like. So once you have account, you will always actually look at right here, this page, and all you need to do is click on go to the portal if uh, and, and give your uh, username and password, and it'll take you to this page. So now let's uh, take a look on the various components. I just call it components. I mean, these are the things that when I first started to learn Azure, I wanted to know what exactly it means uh, as far as, you know, comparing with the on-premise. So anything that you do, let's talk about create a resource. This is how you will create a resource. The word resource, when you first look at it, you probably think that I don't know what it is, but um, that's how I thought. Anything that you do in Azure portal, anything that you create, for example, you create virtual machine, you create a NIC card, you create uh, um, storage, it is a resource in Azure portal. So when you click on create resource, it will give you um, various components here that what kind of resource that you want to create. You do need to create the resource. Anything that you want to create in portal, it would be create resource. Home, uh, as you can see that this is just the home page, and let's talk about the dashboard. Dashboard is basically your first look. If you click on uh, dashboard in Azure portal, all the resources that you recently being being used by you, it'll be, it'll be right here. You can also pin your resources that you're mostly using in Azure portal, and it'll show on your dashboard. And if you pin the resource, it will always be there. But if you don't, then it will remember whatever the last thing that you were working on, and it will uh, put that on your dashboard on its own. All services, these are the services that uh, is offered based on your subscription. This is uh, uh, These are the services that's coming from um, Azure. So if you click on those, you will see all kind of uh, services that is being offered uh, from Microsoft in Azure portal. So if you have created resources, you can click on all resources. It will uh, show you that uh, the resources that you have created right now, there is no resource. Obviously, I have not created anything. So let's talk about resource groups. So basically, when you create resources, uh, Microsoft Azure portal does require you to create um, at least one resource group. Res resource group can be created based on the categories of your application. It can be created based on your uh, subscription. It can be created based on, um, um, for example, you have all the SQL Server that you wanted to put in one re uh, resource group. You could do that, all the domain controller that you wanted to put in one 
resource group. So it can be, it's your choice how you create the resource group, but at least one resource group is required. If I click on that, it's going to say that I don't have any resource group, which is okay. We'll, uh, you know, as we go along with the, in the tutorial, um, we'll see that, uh, you know, how we create resource group and what kind of things that we can put in resource group. App services, if you wanted to create applications uh, that can run on your uh, desktop, mobile, um, uh, you can quickly create uh, application service using this tab. We will not be using in this tutorial that because we're not going to create any application. Our main motto is to set up SQL Server high availability. Uh, so, but just a quick introduction for that. Function apps, we're not going to use that either. But um, this is, if you click on uh, function apps, this is the um, event-based serverless compute experience to accelerate your um, your development um, based on what you use, you will be charged. SQL Server database, this is, um, I mean, you can create the SQL Server databases that's already installed. This is SQL Server as a service. However, we will not be using this. We'll, we'll, we'll use another method to create our SQL Server where SQL Server um, 2017 will be installed and in our uh, virtual machine that we are going to use for uh, uh, in, in this video, that would be um, SQL Server 2017 and uh, Operating System 2016. However, if you wanted to you know, get SQL Server already installed and wanted to use uh, SQL Server as a service, then you, this is uh, where you will create your SQL Server databases. Azure Cosmos DB, if you click on that, this is more of a like, um, uh, it really distribution uh, distributed database and uh, it's uh, if you have an application uh, where you wanted to uh, replicate everything on a different location worldwide this is uh, uh, this database is really handy to use because the replication uh, almost is in no time so all the database uh, data data is available for your customers um, uh, all over the world so Virtual machines, any virtual machine you will create in Azure portal, you can click on that and it'll show all the virtual machine uh, that you have created. Uh, load balancer, this is very important. We're going to use this in our implementation. A load balancer is basically um, a way of uh, communication um, between the resource groups and uh, also um, as far as, you know, if you wanted to open uh, your SQL server or your application uh, uh, over the internet, this is the way to go, and this is the only implementation way to go um, in, in MS Portal. So we will, when we get to, to that point, um, I'll show you how to create the load balancer and how to configure it. Storage accounts, any storage that you will create, um, especially in SQL Server world, we will create a different uh, uh, hard disks and, and uh, tie them with, the, with our uh, virtual machines that's gonna be used for SQL Server implementation. Uh, all the resource accounts. You have to create the resource account. I'm sorry, it's storage account. And then you will see all the hard disks or any storage or blob storage if you have created. You can click on this and uh, it'll bring the storage account and you, you can further navigate and uh, uh, access your storage. Virtual networks. You can create uh, multiple virtual networks uh, in, in your subscription um, and you can also categorize by the virtual networks when it comes to creating the resource groups but this is also mandatory because um, we are going to set up high availability um, SQL Server high availability this is what we will use um, any network that we connect to our virtual machine you can directly access right here Azure Active Directory if you wanted to map your uh, on-premise uh, with Azure Active Directory, you can do that with this. Um, also, you can use the Azure Directory, uh, Active Directory, and that is offered from the uh, portal itself, uh, from Microsoft. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create our own um, DNS servers, and we're going to um, create our own Azure Active, um, not Azure Active Directory, but obviously it's going to be in Azure, but we'll create our own Active Directory and on our user, we're not gonna use this. Monitor, you can monitor various services, um, you know, using this uh, cool tool. If you click on that, uh, it'll show you that what exactly do you want it to monitor. So advisor, also, this is a health advisor. Uh, in, in many 
many uh, application it covers, like high availability, security, performance. Uh, if something is uh, not set right based on uh, Azure standard, it'll tell you that, okay, you need to change this. This is not a recommended way to do it. As you can see right, right here, that uh, it will be read and it will give you the recommendation and you can go on the recommendation and see that what is complaining about. Security Center obviously goes for security. If you want to know that how much you have um, used from your $200 or if you have a other subscription, you wanted to know uh, the cost and the billing, you can click on this and it will show you the, the current usage, um, how much uh, they're charging you for a hard drive, virtual machine, etc. So this was the quick uh, brief introduction uh, for these components that we're going to touch base uh, going forward in our um, um, in our tutorial. So now let's talk about uh, our agenda real quick. Right here is the picture that I wanted to discuss with you. Um, we will create uh, two SQL servers, SQL Server Node 1. We will obviously name them differently, but this is just to give you an idea. Two SQL Server. We will. Uh, use a file share based witness when we create our cluster. We are going to take advantage of Windows failover clustering services right here. And then we're going to create a load balancer which will communicate, which will build the communication between our uh, domain controller um, and our uh, outside clients. And it will have communication with our cluster right here. Um, right here, we're going to create two domain controller basically um, and set up a high availability between the do domain controller so that if something happened to one domain controller, uh, the other domain controller can take over and our services will still be running. So this is just a quick introduction. Uh, next video, we will be start creating our resources in um, Azure portal. I hope this helps.